Hello learners, welcome to NIO studio. Myself Dr. Neelam Tyagi from Faculty of Law, uh, University of Delhi. Today we are going to talk about the senior secondary course. The course code is 338, it is about introduction to law. This is derived from book number one, module number one and we will be discussing about the concept of law. So before we proceed with the, the discussion about the various components which are prescribed in this particular chapter, it is important for us to know that why there is a need to study law in our day-to-day uh, -day life or why you know we need to know about law. So there are various purposes which law serves in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, there are these five points which I have mentioned on my PPT which says that these are the guidelines, law provides the guidelines about what is accepted in the society. So uh, you know it is also preventing conflict between communities. It is protecting the weaker section in the society. It is providing say, stable environment for human coexistence in a society. And it is a way to resolve our dispute peacefully. So these are the various purpose that the law serves. And it is not only serving these purpose, you know, it is affecting all aspects of our life. Ideally speaking, you know, all these function can be subsumed under these four broad headings. That is the law established standard of con conduct. It maintains order, it resolves dispute and protect right and li liberties of every person. Now, let's proceed to the broad components or the major objectives of this lesson. The entire chapter is divided into four component. The first component is about the meaning and definition of law. The second component is about the classification of law. The third component talks about the sources from which uh, with the, uh, the law is derived. And the fourth component is about the role of various people like uh, people and the other you know, mechanisms which are involved in the enforcement of the law and in the administration of justice. So with these uh, four, import, four major components you know, in mind, we'll be uh, picking up each one of the component and we'll be discussing them in detail. So let us now proceed to the first component that is about the meaning and definition of the term law. So when we talk about the meaning of law, there are various meanings which can be ascribed to the term law. The first meaning can be, it, these are the rules. So what are they? They are the rules which are applied indiscriminately to all actions. These are the notional pattern of conduct to which action should confirm. Notional pattern means these are the certain patterns or norms which are uh, given to us by maybe legislation or maybe because they are customary in nature uh, which are you know which we are supposed to confirm to. The third meaning which can be given and it is a good definition of the term law. It is the body of rules and regulations. So what is law? It is a body of rules and regulations which are based on the principle. So these rules and regulation are based on certain principles, principles like justice, fair play and convenience and they are worked out that is the sanctity is given to these rules and regulation by the government bodies to regulate and the purpose is to regulate the human activities. So it is a more fuller definition of the term law that is the body of rules and regulation based on the principle of justice, fair play and convenience which is worked out by government bodies to regulate human activities. Apart from this there is another good definition of the term law. It is the process by which organized society apply rules and regulation to establish and maintain peaceful and orderly relation among the people in the society. So as I told you earlier, the purpose of the law is to, uh, you know, make an organized society and the second purpose is to maintain peaceful and orderly relation among the people in the society. So I hope you are clear with the meaning of the term law. Now apart from uh, the, the, the various meanings that we have discussed, you know, search for an agreed definition of the term law has been an endless journey. There are jurists who are giving conflicting opinion about what is the meaning of the term law. So somebody, some of the jurists are of the opinion that it is a divinely ordained rule. Others say it is a tradition of the old custom. Others believe that it is the recorded wisdom of the wise man. Some of the uh, jurists are of the opinion that it is philosophically discovered system of principles. Some say it is a moral code. Others are of the opinion that these are the agreements of man, woman in politically organized society. And again, as I told you, 
uh, again there are these jurists who are of the opinion that it is the reflection of divine reason. So these are the various uh, meanings which are ascribed by the jurists to the term law. Uh, depending on the school they belong to, uh, the philosophy that they followed, they have given various meaning to the term uh, law and of course there is no certain definition, agreed definition uh, on which you know we can solely rely and say that yes this is the full and the complete definition of the term law. Ideally speaking you know the, the term law can be considered to be a body of rules, commands of the sovereign. Sovereign here means a person in authority, a supreme being. Uh, the second meaning can be it is a body of rules which is discovered by human experience, developed through jurist writing and judicial decision, which is imposed on man, woman in society by the dominant class and it is the economic and social goal of the individual. So these are the various meaning which can be ascribed to the term law. That is, it is given by the sovereign, it is discovered by the human experience, it is based on the jurist writing and judicial decision, it is imposed on the society by the dominant class from among them or it has some economic and social goals of the individual or for the individual. Now as you have already seen the definition of the law can have various bases. There are various parameters on the basis of which the definition of the law has been derived. Some have based their definition on the basis of, or def, uh, have given their definition on the basis of the nature, reason, religion or ethics. Some defines law on the basis of the sources that is the, the sources from which the law has been derived. For example, it is based on custom, precedent and legislation. Others say that you know the law can be defined on the basis of the effect it is going to have on the life of the society. Others are of the opinion that Law can be defined on the basis of the method of its formal expression or authoritative application. And lastly, it can be defined on the basis of the ends that it seeks to achieve. So these are the various yardsticks or parameter or the basis on the basis of which the term law can be defined. It can be on the basis of, you know, the, the source, effect, method and etc. that it seeks to achieve. So there are various definitions of law which are propounded by various renowned jurists from around the world. So some of the important definitions are given on the screen. Uh, the first important definition is the definition which is given by Austin. He gave the theory of command of sovereign according to him. The law is given by the sovereign that is the supreme being to the people to be obeyed and if they are not obeying that uh, you know command then there will be sanction that is there will be punishment. And the second definition which is given by the renowned jurist pattern says that law is a body of rules which are seen to operate as binding rules. Again Dicey is of the opinion that it is the reflection of public opinion that is people make opinion they consider certain you know rules and regulation to be acceptable and then these of, you know accepted principles are crystallized in the form of law. The next definition by hearing says that it is a guarantee of the condition of life of society assured by its state's power of constraint. Salmond is of the view that it is law is a body of principles which is recognized and applied by the state in the administration of justice. So as you can say, you see it depending on the basis on which the, the, the definition of the term law is formulated there is various there are various connotations which are given to the definition of the term law some says it is the command of the sovereign other says it is a body of rules which are considered to be binding uh, then there is another jurist who is of the opinion that it is a reflection of public opinion the fourth jurist is of the opinion that it is a guarantee of the condition of life of society and which is assured by the state power so these are the various uh, definitions which are given by the renowned jurist. Now again the second uh, slide is uh, talking about the other jurists who have given the definition of the term law. The, uh, the first jurist which is mentioned is Calson. He gave the normative theory 
according to him there are certain norms of human behavior which has its genesis in the grand norm so what is the grand norm it is the supreme law of the land say for example if we talk about india the constitution of india is the supreme law of the land so whatever is mandated in the constitution that has that is in in the is is just like a norm which has to be followed by everybody the next uh, jurist is savigny he is from the historical school, school he gave the concept of vog gist according to him uh, the the unconscious growth within the community can be understood in its historical perspective so historically what is acceptable by the community is crystallized in the form of the law the third definition is the definition which is given by roscoe pound he propounded the theory of social engineering according to him there is a social contract law is nothing but a social contract through systematic application of force in a politically organized society he says that law is an instrument to satisfy the maximum wants in a society with the minimum of friction and waste so he says that the purpose of law is to satisfy the maximum wants in the society of the people and the purpose again is to reduce or to minimize the friction and waste so these are the certain definition of the term law all right so let us now proceed to the second component of this chapter it is about the broad classification of law or the classification of law what are the various you know categories under which the law can be categorized so if you can see this uh, chart which is prescribed in your senior secondary book number 1 it says that law can be divided into various categories the first category is the difference between the international law and the municipal law the second difference will be uh, with, between the public law and the private law apart from these uh, two major differences the other difference will be between the substantive and the procedural law and then there are other kind of a classification which is given in your book so the first classification is the difference between the international law and the municipal law now as the name itself suggests international law is a law which deals or which kind of deals with the relation between the state or nation among each other so it is you know if you look at the definition of the term international law there are these four five important points which you have to keep in mind so international law is a customary and conventional rules which are considered to be legally binding by civilized nature nations in their intercourse with each other it is based largely based on the treaties between the civilized nation it can further be divided into two subcategories the first one is the public international law and the second is the private international law as far as the public international law is concerned it deals uh, with the relation between the state with other states say for example you know if we take talk about the extradition treaty and we want to bring back any fugitive from one state to another state then we'll be guided by the public international law the second category is the private international law it deals with the cases having foreign elements and they are decided uh, say for example a uh, contract between a uh, indian and a pakistani and supposing it take place in ceylon and supposing you know uh, we have to decide that what rules etc will be applicable so we have to always rely on the private international law the second category is the municipal law or the national law it is applied within a state so it has nothing to do with the other nation the other state it is applied within a state only so this is the first classification of a uh, law that is the difference between international law and the municipal law let us now proceed to the second difference the second difference is concerning the public law and the private law when we talk about the public law it means the relation of a state with its subject that is on the one hand we have the state and on the other hand we have its subject so there are three classes or sub classes or categories or types of public law that we are supposed to deal with the first is the constitutional law it is the fundamental law of the land it is considered to be the superior the authoritative uh, law of the land and it prescribe the nature of the state the structure of the government uh, the fundamental rights of the people their duties etc so here you know there are it is it is always considered to be the grundnorm as i told you earlier it is the constitutional law the second aspect is 
the administrative law. It deals with the power, function, remedies, etc. It talks about the structure, power and function of the organs of the administration. And if any citizen is aggrieved by any decision of the administrative administrative authority then there are certain remedies which are prescribed in the administrative law. The third category of public law is the criminal law. It, it is uh, you know prescribing the do's and don'ts in the society that is what are the offenses which are not tolerated tolerable by the society and also prescribe certain punishment which will be meted out to a person in case he is found guilty of flouting any of the offenses which is prescribed in the criminal law. The second, um, you know, sub uh, 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 variety of law is the private law. It is dealing with the, it is de it deals with the relation of citizen with each other. That is, the the dealing between the citizens is uh, taken care of by the private law. Uh, there are certain examples of it. Say, for example, when we talk about the personal laws of the Hindus and the Muslim, so each community is. Uh, uh, is is supposed to go to their respective laws and they will be dealt accordingly. The third uh, category or classification of law is the substantive law and the procedural law. The substantive law prescribes the right obligation of a person and the government. Say for example, Indian Penal Code, there are various offences which are prescribed and the second one is the procedural law. It it gives you the procedure, the steps to avail these right obligations, etc. Say, for example, when we talk about criminal procedure to, uh, procedure code, it is uh, talking or giving us the machinery or the mechanism by which you know you can uh, you you can follow, you can approach the court and uh, kind of you know bring the wrongdoer to the court and get the justice. The third variety or third classification law is the natural or moral law, the conventional law, the customary law and the civil law. So each one of them as the name itself implies are based on certain parameters and are uh, serving certain purpose in the society. When we talk about natural or moral law, it is based upon the principle of right and wrong. When we talk about conventional law, these are the rules which are agreed for regulation, uh, regulating conduct towards each other. Say for example, Indian Contract Act, customary law, it is the rule of action which is formally established, the civil law which is enforced by the state and are essentially territorial in nature. So these are the four type of classification which we have to keep in mind whenever we talk about the concept of law. Because this basic understanding will tell you that which law you are supposed to rely on in case of any wrong etc. and how you are supposed to get the things done. So let us now proceed to the sources. As I told you, there are three major sources of law. First, we have customs. Second, we have judicial precedents. And the third source of important law, which is very important, is legislation. The first uh, source of law is custom, which is the most important source of law and are the oldest sources of law. So through you know continuous um, observation, observance of particular rule and regulation, they get, get crystallized. There is general acceptance among the masses with respect to a particular custom. So whenever the law is framed, of course, you know we do rely on these established customs, and they are, you know, if they are according to the public policy, can be crystallized or can find place in the final legislation. So in order to consider a customer as a source of law there are certain essential which uh, you know a custom need to confirm to so the first important essential of a con of a custom is that it should be and it should be antique that is it should exist from time immemorial or from a long time second essential is continuance that is it is a set practice and it is continued in practice without any break. The third essential of a custom is reasonableness in its application. That is, it should be, it should be a reasonable uh, custom, it should not be unreasonable. The fourth uh, important component is it should be obligatory in character. That is, the public opinion should be in favor of observing this custom. Fifth point is regarding the certainty. That is, the custom should be certain, it should not be vague. Now the sixth point is regarding the consistency in observance that is there it's it, it's not that you know there are break in between it should be consistently followed 
and the last important essential of a custom is that it should conform with the statutory law and the public policy as i told you that is you know we we have to consider the larger masses their right etc and you know welfare and then we have to see that whether the custom you know should be followed or should not be followed as a source of law so these are the essentials which a custom need to have in order to be considered as a important source of law the second important source of law are the judicial precedents judicial precedents which are also known as stare decisis it means that the judge made made the law that is you know they are based on the precedents there are these judicial decision which are pronounced and these judicial decisions give rise to a legal principle that can be applied in future cases based upon similar fact so once a judicial precedent is given and you know the the another judge is faced with similar set of facts then you know there is no further probing which need to be indulged into directly the uh, the judicial precedent can be picked up and can be applied to the similar facts please remember the a uh, judicial precedent which is given by the supreme court will be binding on the high court and the judicial precedent which is pronounced by the high court will be binding uh, on the district courts within the jurisdiction of that particular high court so please remember as far as judicial precedents are concerned they are ha having binding authority and they should be followed in every subsequent case unless and until it is overruled now when we talk about judicial uh, precedent you know a judgment may contain these two important component there can be ratio and there can be obiter so what is the ratio it is the general principle which is deduced in a case it is considered to be authoritative in nature that is the general principle they are binding in every subsequent case now the obiter is different from ratio in the sense that there are certain observation which are made by the judges upon the broader aspects of the law or answer to the hypothetical questions which is raised by the by the judges or counsel in the course of the hearing please remember these are the mere observations and they are not having any binding authority so the the larger difference between ratio and obiter is that ratio is a general principle and is binding in the subsequent case whereas obiter dicta is merely the observation which is given uh, in answer to any hypothetical question and it is not having any binding authority the third source of law is legislation legislation means the making of the law making of the rules for human conduct there is a process of legal uh, evolution for a legislation um through legislation we formulate the norms of human conduct that is what is expected from a person how they should be behaving in a particular society so for making a particular legislation there are these procedures which are prescribed so we are supposed to follow those procedure and then only the law can be made the legislation can be made so who is going to make this legislation there are various agencies which are designated by the constitution there is a machinery there is a procedure which is prescribed under the constitution for making the legislation so largely legislation is nothing but the declaration of legal rules by a competent authority so these are the various important sources of law let us now proceed to the final component of this particular chapter it is talking about the role of legal system so first we have to know the role of what the legal system judiciary second legal professionals third and the civil society fourth in the enforcement of law and the administration of justice so here in this particular component we are going to deal with or discuss the role of four important components in the enforcement of law and in the administration of justice so first of all we need to know about the role of legal system so what is a legal system legal system means a set of legal principles and norms to protect the people in the society it uh, what does the legal system do it recognize the rights and it prescribe the duties it provides the way to enforce this right and duties and it helps the society in achieving its identified goals so the legal system is helping in the administration of justice in the enforcement of law with 
uh, the help of these legal principles and norms and the larger idea is to protect the people in the society. There are these rights and duties which are given, there are these goals which are given and you know everybody is working towards the realization of these goals. So we, when we talk about the role of the judges, they play a very important role in the enforcement and administration of justice. Uh, the third, uh, you know, important or the key functionary that we need to focus on are the advocates. It is often said that they are the officers of the court. So what does it say? They are the officers of the court. They are not employed in the court. They are the officer of the court and as a key functionary, functionaries, you know, as the officer of the court, they assist the judges in, you know, kind of administration of the justice and the enforcement of the law in the sense that they help the judges in finding the truth on disputed fact in issue. That is the point which is disputed, the fact which is disputed. So they assist the court in finding the truth and whenever any, you know, any any problem or the issue arises with respect to the interpretation of the law, the advocates are assisting the court in um, you know finding the true meaning of a particular legislation, particular provision or law. The fourth important functionary in this uh, league is the civil society. They are also very very important in the enforcement and administration of justice. Uh, in the sense that these are the citizens and there are these particular groups which which kind of play a very pivotal role in the good governance. Whenever any maladministration happens or whenever uh, anything done which is wrong, which is against the uh, constitutional mandate, they may create pressure groups and they can kind of uh, help in uh, realizing the goals which are mentioned in our constitution which is the supreme law of the land. So learners, I hope you are uh, very clear about the four major components of the topics which we have discussed today. We have discussed the definition and meaning of the term law, that is what is your understanding, how do you comprehend the term law. Secondly, we have discussed the various sources of the law, that is from where the term law or the concept law derives its authority. Thirdly, we have discussed the various classification of the law, that is what are the various categories of law and whenever your right is infringed, which law you are supposed to go to and how you are supposed to avail that uh, right. Fourthly, we have discussed the various functionaries, the various uh, components uh, who are involved in the administration of the justice, administration of the law and the enforcement of law. Thank you so much.